I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today because I'm about to explore what the best settings are for you. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I want to explore what the best settings are for FPV video. What the best GoPro settings are for... Damn it. And if you don't have a GoPro, that's fine too. Uh, these these videos... I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today, and I hope you learn something over the course of this whole playlist, because I want to explore what the best GoPro settings are, or any action camera that you've got, but I'm going to be working with a GoPro, what the best GoPro settings are for recording and uploading FPV video, and it's going to take more than one video to go through it all. So, there's a lot of content to come. Hope you enjoy it. When I did my review of the Runcam 3, I compared the Runcam 3's footage to the GoPro Hero 5 session, and quite frankly, my Hero 5 session footage looked like crap. And many of you pointed that out. Thank you so much. Yes, you're right. I clearly, something was not right in my settings, right? So I was using settings that had been suggested by other people as good settings, but I never sat down and really dug through the settings to find out what was best. And you know me, if there's anything I like to do, it's dig through things to find out what's best and do comparisons. And that's what we're going to do in this playlist. In this specific video, we're going to be looking at resolution. I've got recordings that I've done at 1080p, 2.7K, and 4K resolution, and we're going to see which of those looks best for FPV. Now, the answer to that might seem freaking obvious. Obviously, 4K is better. I mean, if you set aside the fact that 4K files are much, much bigger and uh, take longer to upload, we're not even going to talk about uploading in this video. YouTube, well, I'm going to make a whole other video about which is best for YouTube. I just want to see whether 4K video looks better coming out of the GoPro than 1080p or 2.7K. And here's why I think that's not a given. Obviously, a 4K video has higher resolution. But bit, the pixels in, a, in an image are not the ultimate determinant of image quality. Uh, one of the major things that makes video look better, and especially fast motion video like OFPV, oh, yeah, FPV, you need high bit rate. And if the 2.7K video is at, let's say, 45 megabits per second, and the uh, 4K video is at, let's say, 60 megabits per second, then the 2.7K video could have a better ratio of bits per second to pixel, if that's even a thing, and maybe it's going to look better. I don't know if that's true. We're going to find out. The other reason I'm not convinced that the 4K video will necessarily look better is that it's motion blur, okay? So uh, when an when a image sensor is run at a lower than native resolution, in general, it becomes more sensitive to light. And the reason for that is, let's say you've got a 4K image sensor and you're recording 4K video, right? So for every sensing element that's in the sensor, that it's sensing one pixel's worth of picture information, right? But if you've got a 4K sensor and you're recording at only, say, 2K resolution, well, now every pixel that the sensor is outputting has multiple uh, sensing elements in the image sensor that can be used to ca to calculate that pixel's value. And as a result, essentially, you get more light sensitivity. It was, you have, it's kind of like getting a uh, higher ISO, but it's not exactly like that. Anyway, never mind. So it's possible uh, that the GoPro is able to run at a faster shutter speed when you run at a lower resolution. This is something that definitely happens in other digital cameras. I don't know for sure whether it happens in the GoPro, and I want to explore that. The reason that matters is that if we're running at a slower shutter speed, there will be more motion blur, and the fact and the 4K image may actually not look any sharper than the 2.7K or the 1080p image. Now, if we if we had a GoPro and it was just sitting stationary, obviously the 4K image would look sharper, regardless of the shutter speed. But but that's not what we're doing, is it? We're going to be working with for screen grabs, and the reason we're working with screen grabs, there's several reasons for that. One of them, though, is that you are probably viewing this video on a 1080p monitor or you're probably not viewing this video on a 4K monitor, and I certainly don't have a 4K monitor. And what that means is that if we want to see the actual resolution of the images, we need to view them at 100% and crop them out. 
if I view the image full screen or the video full screen, the 4K and the 2K will get scaled down. So that's why we're looking at screen grabs. And again, I am aware that screen grabs are not necessarily the best determinant of video quality. Uh, you can download the raw video, you can watch it yourself. Again, if you're watching it on a 1080 monitor though, the 4K is not gonna look any better. What I want you to look at is, look at the, number one, look at the trees in the background. My hypothesis here is that the higher resolutions have to use lower frame rates and therefore have more motion blur. But if that's true, then a tree way off in the distance is not going to have much motion blur because it's not moving very much, as opposed to something here down in the foreground of the image well, that's, that's going to be moving faster. If my hypothesis is true, then the 4K image, which is what we're looking at now, is going to have sharper trees in the background but the grass in the front is going to be relatively blurry because it's got more motion relative to the camera. You can also look at the gate and look at the edges of the gate. Look up here at the top of the gate where we've got these nicks and, and stuff. Look at how much detail you can see there. And I also like to look at the cones and look at the edges of the cones to see how sharp they are. Here you can see grass in front of this cone. How much detail do you get there? And just generally look at how much sort of mo macro blocking or encoding blocking. If we look here, do you see how the grass has kind of gotten blocky, right? That's, that's just the encoding algorithm. If there were a higher bit rate, then we wouldn't be seeing that. Now here is the 2.7K image. Again, not identical, but as close as I could get to the same frame. And we can go back and forth and we can compare the 2.7K to the 4K image. Here's 4K. 2.7K. Now I can see that the trees definitely are blurrier in the 2.7K image. I'll go back. You can see a lot of little branches and leaves here, whereas here they're, they're much blurrier. So definitely we are seeing reduced resolution here uh, in, in the background. But if we look in the foreground, take a look at the grass down here, take a look at the cones, the things that are moving quickly relative to the frame. Got some blades of grass here. Lots of blocking here. Whereas I feel like the 2.7K image is overall more consistent. And by the way, I've been, I've been, my eyes have been glazing over looking at a bunch of other screen grabs. I've picked these to try to be representative of my results. Um, I, I feel like the 2.7K images are more consistent, especially as you transition from the foreground to the background. If we look at the 4K image, just look here, it's just really blocky you got some detail in the foreground it's really blocky here in the background whereas the 2.7k seems to have more consistent resolution going all the way back now one possible reason for this especially if the foreground is sharper i submit that the reason is that the, the 2k image is using a faster shutter speed and is making a sharper image uh, as far as the background not being blocky i wonder if that's because the the bits per second per pixel is, be, is, is a higher ratio for 2.7K than 4K. In other words, to get equivalent quality out of a 4K image, maybe you would need not 60 megabits per second, but 80 megabits per second, but that's just too much for the SD card to handle perhaps. And so, so you're effectively getting less resolution. We can certainly see places where the 2K image is not as sharp. I was just noticing this sticker here. And if we look here, we can see that the sticker is really quite sharp here in the 4k image the edge here is really quite sharp whereas this the image as a whole in 2.7k is softer but i feel like it's also more consistent and maybe a preferable image now here's 1080p and you could immediately see the reduction in resolution drastic reduction in resolution compared to 2.7k and 4k so what's the conclusion here? Well, my conclusion is that 2.7K looks better than 4K, at least for fast motion video like FPV. And at the beginning of the video, I suggested the hypothesis that that was due to the shutter speed. If that were true, then what we would see is that under other lighting conditions, 4K would look better. If the scene was bright enough, then 4K could also use a fast shutter speed and then it would look sharper and more resolution than 2K. But I don't think that's actually true uh, because this was a pretty bright scene. It was a pretty bright day. If that's not bright enough to get a fast shutter speed out of 4K, then what is? And that led me to investigate a little further and I think I found the actual answer. So those of you who've watched all the way to the end of the video are gonna get a nice reward. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the bitrate of these videos, and I'm going to do that. Uh, I, the easiest way I know to do that is to play it in VLC and then to go uh, 
tools, codec information, statistics. And here in the statistics, you can see the input bit rate. And you can see that the input bit rate here is basically 60 megabits per second, 59,000 kilobits per second, 60 megabits per second. And now this is a 4K video, you can see up here in the title. So 4K video is using 60 megabits per second, and that's actually something that GoPro has, has advertised, that the, the, the Hero 5 and the Hero 5 session uh, have a higher maximum bit rate. If we then go and look at the 2K video, the 2.7K video, we'll do the same thing, tools, codec information, statistics, well, what do you know about that? It is also 60 megabits per second, more or less. Now just for completeness, by the way, let's check the 1080p. The 1080p is 45 megabits per second. And I think that is the explanation. Uh, the, the GoPro Hero 5 session maxes out at 60 megabits per second, and that limit is a hard limit whether you're recording at 4K or 2.7K. Uh, my understanding from reading on the internet and also doing tests where I just record videos and check the bitrate, it doesn't go over 60 megabits per second. And what that means is that when you record at 4K, you're essentially, you've got a lower bits per second per pixel and the video quality suffers if you've got fast motion. If you were recording a static scene with not a lot of motion in it, then 4K would look sharper because it doesn't need the resolution. But for something like FPV video where there's constant fast motion, the bitrate is very, very important. And, in, and 60 megabits per second is just not enough to get a really nice sharp image out of a 4K out of a 4K resolution. So why doesn't GoPro go higher than 60 megabits per second? Well, I don't work for GoPro, obviously, but there's two things that come to mind. Number one, the file sizes would get really big and unwieldy, and consumers, at least, don't like dealing with big, huge, massive files. Pros, obviously, are used to it. The other thing is that many SD cards would struggle to go faster than, than about 50, 60 megabits per second. And that's true even though nominally a Class 10 card can go faster than that, but the reality is that the cards often fail to go faster than that. And GoPro doesn't want to create a situation where people are recording and they're getting dropouts and they're getting camera crashes and etc. So my conclusion is that I'm going to be recording at 2.7K going forward. The nice thing is that on a GoPro Hero 5 session at least, 2.7K still gives you the option to do Super View, which you can't do at 4K. And it still gives you the option to do 60 frames per second, but you can't do 60 frames per second and super view at the same time. So it still gives you some flexibility and your file size are still relatively manageable. If you're not using a GoPro, you can run through a lot of these same tests that I've done, record the footage, compare the footage, look at the bit rate, and, and the, the short version is that if the, the bit rate doesn't go up as the resolution goes up, then don't, don't, you don't want to record at the higher resolution. You're going to get worse image quality. There's a lot more options that I'm going to be looking at in future videos in this series, and they're coming soon. I'm pretty excited about to get this stuff out. Uh, anytime somebody accuses me of, of having been dumb and made the wrong choice, uh, I get mad, and then I start doing research, and I'm like, well, I'll show you. I'll do all the research and then I'll know the answers. And that's how I ended up where I am today. Um, so we're going to be looking at ISO limit. We're going to be looking at shutter speed. And most importantly, we're going to be looking at what happens when you actually upload this video to YouTube. As you may know, YouTube kind of destroys video quality. Uh, so something that looks great coming out of the camera may look terrible often does look terrible coming down from YouTube. That's all coming up in future videos. Stay, you know, keep an eye out for those. Leave any comments or questions down in the comments. In the comments, that's where you leave comments, right? Uh, if you think I've screwed something up, let me know and I'll get angry and do more research. I'll show you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Happy flying.